Okay, well, welcome everybody to today's SigmaSoft webinar. So today we have a topic-specific webinar uh, titled Analyze the Entire Mold. So we have quite a few people online today, uh, one of the largest audiences we've actually had yet. So uh, glad to see that everybody, uh, looks like most people have attended the introductory presentation and now have uh, come back to learn some more topic-specific things about uh, SigmaSoft. So uh, uh, we're gonna, the lines are all muted today, and at the end we'll take questions. So my contact information is on the screen, and I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So uh, the agenda for today will be, I'm just going to go through a couple PowerPoint slides, and then we're going to get into the software and show a couple different examples. So uh, I realize we're uh, showing this through the, the, the Internet today, so hopefully everything will come through smooth. I'll try to you know go slowly and, and rotate and, and zoom in, zoom out uh, a little slower than I normally would, so it comes through on your end uh, very clearly. Okay, so... I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started here. Uh, just real quick, I just want to make sure that it uh, looks like everybody can hear me and see me. So that's a good sign. Okay, so uh, on the screen here, so this is just a, a quick example. So I'm going to show a couple slides of actually some of the examples I'm going to show today. So uh, again, the, the idea here of today's webinar is the, the ability to highlight or show some of the abilities of highlighting the, uh, the capabilities of showing the entire mold within SigmaSoft. So on the screen you can see here we've actually imported an entire mold base into the software. So this is kind of a new uh, capability to a lot of people, uh, whether you've used simulation or, or have, uh, have seen some simulation results or had maybe your tooling vendor do some, some analysis for you. Uh, so typically you would bring in your part, your runner, and you know, cool and maybe design your cooling lines and then do your analysis that way. And then a lot, it depends, depending on the software package, some softwares will just assume it's a, it's a certain steel. Uh, other ones will allow you to actually specify a, a certain mold type or, or, or different mold types. Uh, but, uh, but the ability to actually look at all the components, that's something very unique to SigmaSoft and that's kind of what I want to highlight today. So on the screen, you can just see a, an example here of a, of a, you know, a couple hot drops that go down into a, to a, an insert. So you can see the insert that I've turned on for one cavity is in orange. You know, so we have our, of course, our sprue bushing and everything on top in green. And then the different mold plates, I've just kind of changed the color so you can kind of see the different plates there. Hopefully it comes through on the screen. Now I'm showing this in PowerPoint because this is actually a confidential mold design. And that's typically what we run into. So finding designs for today's webinar was, was very interesting to find something I can actually share with you, but I have. So, um, and I also want to, uh, you know, just at least throw out a couple of thank yous. Uh, so, of course, my team up in Schaumburg, Illinois, which is our headquarters, uh, you know, work with them to get, a, you know, some mold bases. And then also I'd like to thank uh, specifically uh, Penn State Erie, uh, the plastics program there. Uh, Jason Williams was able to provide uh, a very nice example that we'll be able to show today. And uh, so Penn State is, is one of, uh, you know, of course, teaches plastics engineering and, and employs the use of SigmaSoft in their program. And then also uh, TPS Tech, uh, which uh, sells and supports SigmaSoft on the East Coast. Uh, so Jim Shamaris and Jack Doolittle based out of Pittsburgh. So they also were able to help me uh, facilitate uh, that relationship and, and gain some of these examples for today. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and go to the next slide. So this is one example we'll look at today. So this is just an example where I've actually... Uh, turned off the mold plates, but I've left on uh, the cavity insert, and then you can actually see in red, this is actually the runner system, uh, the gate, and then the actual uh, part itself. Uh, so I've sliced through the cavity insert, and you can even see we have uh, some cooling up through the core in the, in the dark blue. Uh, so I put this in PowerPoint real quick. Again, I'll get in and show you this in the software, but I just quickly want to show uh, also the advantages of running a multi-cycle analysis. So I took this exact same uh, project, or mold, and after one cycle, you can see here that you know, the temperature is, of course, as the polymer flows through the insert and down through the cavity and everything. Uh, you see we got, you know, I just picked a query to a couple points. So here at the top, we have 125.9 and 126. But then I also ran it uh, 20 cycles. And then I injected the 21st cycle to see, uh, you know, over those 20 cycles, what would happen to that insert when it's subjected to 20 cycles of heat load. And, of course, also cooling, right? that period of time. So you can see here, you actually see quite a, quite a big def, uh, temperature distribution here. And I've kept the scale on the right side the same, you know, 100 to 145 Fahrenheit, just to kind of keep, keep the color plot relative. Uh, so again, we'll look at that today as well. And then here's an example that if, uh, and, I, and I believe everybody online has attended the introductory presentation. And if you haven't, uh, it's available online, so you can go uh, view the recorded presentation. 
Uh, but here, this is one of the examples we show is the difference from cycle to cycle again. And we'll look at this, uh, this particular uh, project uh, in today's webinar. And then, of course, uh, we're going to go into the software demonstration. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of here, and uh, we'll get started. OK. So the first thing I want to do is actually just open up a brand new Sigma Soft interface. Now, I've worked on, uh, of course, several projects and different customers, and it's always different, right? Uh, so sometimes you just get the part geometry. Sometimes you get maybe just a couple mold plates or maybe an insert. Uh, and then sometimes you actually get the whole entire mold assembly. So uh, ideally, whenever I run a project or work with a customer, um, I'd like to actually get the, the entire mold assembly because then I have everything. Then I can decide what I need and what I don't want. Um, you know, sometimes the, the bolts and, and, play, and some uh, different pieces and stuff, you can usually get rid of those. And you just want to keep the, the core things that you know are going to affect heat transfer through the mold, it's going to impact your it's going to affect your cycle and, and your of course your your quality. So here I'm going to go ahead and just open up uh, a mold base, just to kind of show you what the process looks like when you go into SigmaSoft. So now this originally came in as a uh, as a SolidWorks assembly, and uh, we just basically imported that directly in, and uh, and sometimes I'll convert it. Uh, so in this case, I believe I converted it to a, uh, an SAT file, or sometimes you can refer to an SDEP file, and then bring it in that way. So as you can see here, we have uh, really our, our entire mold base. I have to remind myself to, to go slower, because I know the rotation uh, will be a little chunky if I, if I spin too fast. So here, and then of course on the left side is our really our, our sheet list, or all of our different components. So if I click each one of these, these are actually all the different components that comprise of this mold base. Then if I go in here, and this is actually the same example I showed you in the PowerPoint where I sliced through just to show you the kind of the guts of the mold. And then here I can go ahead and pick. You can see here I've already renamed that my top plate and all the different components here. And of course you can even go through and, and, uh, and you know, hide it and then I actually start uh, drilling down into it. And then just again decide you know, what you want to keep in the analysis. And then once you decide everything, you rename, organize your project, uh, then what you typically would do is go in and assign your materials. So right now everything's assigned to the part material, uh, which would be a polymer or uh, or some sort of, uh, I guess, injected material. Uh, and then what you would do is go ahead and specify, okay, this is uh, this is a, you know, say a movable half, or you know, from the ejection side, and then or my fixed half, you know, my A plates, my B plates, and then assign those materials. Okay, we have P20 or F7 or a beryllium copper insert, and then you can really go through and really just assign everything exactly as it is in the real world. And then also once that's assigned, then you go into your process setup and assign. Uh, really, the, the process, right? You know, what what, what components are, are moving or opening at certain times, you know, and, and what key transfers occurring between different deals and so forth. Okay, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, uh, but I just wanted to at least show that capability there, and uh, so I'm going to go ahead and, and exit out of here. Okay, so uh, the first example here today that I want to show is a. Uh, is actually a, just, a, just a simple gear, so a four cavity gear. And I figured before I'm going to get in and show the actual, because what you're going to see today is mostly mold-based results. So I'm going to show uh, different things on the actual mold steel. Uh, but I figured at least to give you an idea what this part looks like. So again, this is just a three plate cold runner mold. And you can see here we have the, the four cavities. And, and what I'll do here is, is really I just want to you know, just animate this filling pattern, just kind of give you a quick idea of what, it, what we're looking at. And of course, you can see here, so as it flows through the runner system and then down into the, uh, the secondary screw and into the part itself. I'm not sure if you caught it there, but it's a pretty thick gear. So actually, we would caught a good deal of jetting right at the beginning there. I'll, once it finishes, you know, I'll go ahead and just uh, start that again. So you can see there, it shoots down to the bottom of the cavity and then kind of fills out. Uh, and then of course, you can see here, we're actually looking at uh, injection pressure. Okay, so so really what I want to do here is I want to go ahead and, and focus more on the mold itself. So if I go here and I click over on my uh, mold materials, you can see here that I have all my different components. So right now I've turned on the parts and the gates and the runner and the sprue. Uh, but I'm actually going to go ahead and, and switch this. I'm just going to actually turn on my, my movable half um, or my ejection side uh, B core plate. So you can see here, now if, even if I turn on my parts, I'm going to just turn on three parts. 
you can see, you know, I have that filling pattern. It's still at that animation right into that cavity. So I'm going to go ahead and just turn these off for now. And again, leave that like that. Okay, so go ahead and uh, zoom out. And then it really what I want to do here is that what, the goal of this exercise is I just want to show the cycle to cycle change in temperature. So I'm going to go ahead here into my, uh, into my temperature results. So you can see here under temperature I have multiple cycles. So what I've done in this case is I've run about 15 cycles. So if I go into my first cycle, of course, and I have all my different time steps uh, and so forth. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to be consistent. So what I want to do is I'm going to pick my third time step. And really what, the, what you're looking at here is really one second into packing. So we've already, uh, so if we look at our tree here, uh, we have our, uh, our filling results. And then under the cooling, uh, we have basically our packing cooling uh, solidification phase. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at really one second into our packing phase. So the part's already been full. And that was the idea here is I want to show, okay, the, the cavity's full of polymer. Now what is the, what's the actual mold temperature look like? And then also cycle one versus, say, cycle five, cycle ten, what happens after you keep heating that mold. And the idea here is to give people an idea of what you would do in the real world, right? Take this information and somehow apply it to, okay, when you're putting your cooling system in or you're deciding what type of steel to use, you know, run all those scenarios up front and decide, you know, how much heat load is happening in this mold. And then you can make those decisions a lot easier in the simulation. And it's a lot easier uh, to do this in the software and assign your temperatures, so you say your cooling temperature for the movable half and the fixed half and so forth uh, in the simulation uh, versus, you know, out on the floor, you know, running, you know, 100, 200, 300 you know, pieces of scrap, which is going to cost you money. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just rotate this a little bit so I can uh, maybe so you can see it a little clearer. And I'll zoom into these really these cavities. And what I did here is I just took the gear and I just took a, a standard mold plate and then I just basically cut it into the steel. So you can do all of that stuff inside of SigmaSoft and running Boolean operations. Okay, so if we look at the temperature here, you can see. Now I'm going to go just go to cycle two now. And I'm going to hit the same time step, the third time step. Now if we go to the third time step, so you can see here now that, and now we're starting to see some heat load build up uh, around this cavity. So if I go to the fourth cycle, you can, uh, you can see it's slowly growing, right? So the, the lighter the blue gets, the warmer it's getting. And even if we go here down to, say, cycle seven, just pick a random cycle, you can see it keeps growing. And we can even go ahead and query on this, right? Go ahead and pick you know, pick a different value, you know, pick a, pick a value here, and then go, say, to cycle 8, and then watch that value change. Even if I go back to cycle 1, just for comparison's sake, so we got, what, 195 and 219, and if I go back to our first cycle, you know, we're about 10 degrees less. And again, the whole idea here is to, to run enough cycles here, so we're using more of a realistic data, uh, you know, when we calculate more important things like stress and warpage and, you know, what time to eject the part so we can, you know, uh, hone in on our cycle time. And we can also, in this situation, go ahead and turn off these queries, just take this and slice it. So we can go here, let's say, let's slice in the Z direction. You can see, you can see my cooling channels, of course, through the part. Now let's take this maybe right to something like that. And then the same idea, right? So the, the idea here, or really my point is to show that you really can slice this and look at different time steps, different cycles. And again, we can go back here and look at our, our various cycles. So we're looking at cycle uh, one right now. Let's go down to say cycle 15. So pretty big difference there in the heat load around that cavity. Now this is more of a simple example, right? We're just looking at a gear and really some isolated heat spots in those areas. Um, but let, let's even go back here and uh, and turn off that. Let's look at our runner, our runner plate. Okay, so here we have a little bit more color, right? Uh, so you know our runner system or the polymer uh, is basically gone through this uh, feed system uh, 15 cycles. So again, we can go down here and look at and, and really just get an, an idea of what's happening. You see, obviously, we get some heat load build up at these corners, and uh, you know, go back 
again, you know, we can look at, you know, any time step, right? You look at here, we can go back deeper into packing. And again, we can, and we're at cycle 15 now. Let's go back to cycle two, for example. So again, pr pretty big, pretty cool capability. And uh, and again, that's really the point of, of this of this exercise right here. Is just showing you know you have all these capabilities if you want to incorporate all the mole components in the analysis. And sometimes for very high tolerance parts, uh, tight tolerance parts, you know, just the littlest change can make a difference. Um, I've been working on a project just recently where uh, it's a two-stage ejection, and it's actually touching uh, the movable half for a couple additional seconds. So it actually, um, the, the A side pulls away, pulls pins out of the, the part, but it actually still touches uh, the, the kind of a floating plate in there or floating insert for maybe another two seconds. And then that insert actually pulls away, that plate pulls away, and then it actually, the part moves with the movable half or the ejection half and is on that part, on that side for another couple seconds. And actually just by those couple different seconds and touching that hot uh, insert, uh, the warpage uh, results are, are, can be drastically different, you know, depending on where it's sticking and, and, and what, what uh, heat source it's, uh, it's, I guess, it's touching. So, again, uh, as I said in my previous webinar, you know, let's calculate more and assume less. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and switch examples here. So I'm going to just uh, exit out of this one. All right, so let me see. So the next I want to show is a, uh, is a mold base. So let me go here. So this is the one we actually we looked at um, in the PowerPoint slide. So, so here we actually have, I believe what I have here turned on is the cavity insert. So again, I'm going to go to my material list. So you can see here that we have our, you know, our different cooling lines. We have our part, of course. We have our different uh, uh, movable half. And in SigmaSoft, we, we typically refer to it as movable half and fixed half. So uh, you may be more familiar with terms A side, B side, or injection side, ejection side. Uh, of course, if you eject from the B side, which is typically what you would do. Um, so just want to go through some of the terminology here. And uh, so actually, what I wanna also want to do here is let me just go into the, uh, the preprocessor here and show what this, uh, what this mold looks like. So, Here's the, the project that I was just looking at. So we have all of our mold plates. So what this is is a four cavity tool. You can see here we have some cooling, uh, some perimeter cooling around these different inserts. Let me go ahead and just rotate this. So you can see the top part. Now you also notice here that there's this box over the corner. So what this is called is a cut box. So the idea here is that since it's a symmetrical mold, I don't necessarily have to simulate all four cavities or have the additional runtime to, to say, have a um, basically a, 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 a model that's four times uh, bigger than it could be. Uh, now, sometimes you might want to do that, right? Uh, if you look at, you know, you want to look at the entire mold and everything. But in this case, uh, you can use what's called a cut box and just basically look at one quadrant of the mold. And then it's just going to tell you that, hey, each of the other three quadrants are the same as that. Uh, so it cuts down runtime a little bit if you're really just looking at uh, specific things. You just want to see how the part fills and, and how the, the cooling around that insert, for example, is affecting heat transfer and, and cooling and so forth. So again, over here on the left side, we have the different components uh, of, this, uh, of this design. So also what I want to do, so you can see here the mold base is kind of transparent, so that way you can see inside. Now, of course, I can go here and, you know, and take all these and go ahead and shade them. So now you can actually see the mold base itself. And again, I've, I've actually removed some of the uh, some of the bolts and, and, and holes and things like that. You know, things that wouldn't have a drastic impact on the heat transfer for this specific uh, analysis and what I'm doing. So now I'm actually going to turn those off. Now you can actually see the insert that's inside around that cavity. So actually, let me go ahead here and turn this uh, and go ahead and shade this as well. And then actually, I'm going to just go ahead and change the color, make it a little more clear. So this is actually the insert, right? So we have our, our cavity insert, our core insert. So even if I highlight, uh, say, the, uh, the cavity part, and then, of course, there's actually a, a piece inside of there, and then, of course, our, what comprises of our core, the different components. There, a couple of those are inside. And then, of course, the cooling. So we can see we have our, our cooling around the core. We have our uh, cool, two uh, cooling lines that actually go around the, the cavity insert. 
And then we actually have some runner cooling up here. Now again, we have it cut into quadrants, so right now you're just seeing a quarter of that. Uh, so if we simulate the whole mold, then we would just go ahead and, and have the entire, in this case, probably more like a, a U-shaped, you know, an in and out uh, type cooling line. And then of course all of our different components down here, you know, I can go ahead and you know, turn off, turn on my parts, you know, my, my runner system and so forth. Okay, so I think you get a pretty good idea here uh, what we're looking at. So I want to go back to the uh, the results here now. Okay, so now in this case, what I want to do, so I'm going to go ahead and turn on uh, basically the movable half. All right, so what we have here, and I already have actually a temperature result up there, so I'm kind of getting a little ahead of myself. Um, so the idea here, is really just to evaluate, you know, hey, how's that core doing? You know, how, are we getting uh, sufficient cooling up, up, up through there? I'm going to go ahead and turn on some of the cooling here as well. And actually, I'm just going to go ahead and turn on that cavity insert as well. So now you can see kind of, uh, you can actually see the cavity inside of the insert. I'm going to also turn on my runner. Okay, so I think I would just make this a little bigger for you. Pan it down a little bit. So now if we go over to results, you know, let's just look at, uh, you know, just the, the, the filling animation. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to scale this. So we can do an automatic scale, which is the entire scale. Uh, but since we're going to animate this over time, I like to have a consistent time scale. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it, say, 100 degrees to 145. And what this is really going to do is it's going to highlight more of the, the temperature of the insert, right? Because the polymer is going to be a lot hotter than 145 Fahrenheit. Uh, so what we're going to see is mainly a red polymer. Uh, but, but what I want to focus on is the, the temperature of the insert. So in order to really have that stick out, we need to have more of a, an isolated scale to, to show those temperature differences of what really a true temperature gradient would be through that uh, that uh, cavity insert or that core insert. Okay, so now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn on my animation. So here, let's just look at our filling animation. So I'm going to go down here to temperature. Then just animate this. So now we actually see the polymer coming through the runner, down through the gate, and then Actually, there's one thing that I forgot to turn on, and that's my part. There we go. So if I don't have my part turned on, you actually won't be able to see the polymer flowing through the what's defined as the, as the part geometry. So there we go. Now we can actually see the polymer flowing down through there. You can also see the mold as it's heating up around the perimeter. I'm going to go ahead and animate that one more time. So you pay attention around around this area. You can see how that yellow becomes more orange and it really starts to heat up and even becomes a dark orange. And you can you, know, you can query values. So we can query a value up here, over here, and then run that as well. Okay, so um, so let's let me see. Let, what do we want to do here next? Um, so how about if I let's just show a difference between cycle to cycle, for example. So again, if we go under our cooling temperature, we have our various cycles. This is kind of what I showed in the beginning in that PowerPoint. So say if I just go to cycle two. and then pick a time step. So 
here, cycle two, let's say we look at into our packing phase. So let's say, let's go, uh, let's just pick something, say nine, uh, almost 10 seconds. But then again, if we go here down to, let's say, cycle 12, it sees quite a, quite a different gradient there. And if we say you go down to cycle, say, cycle 17, for example, same time step, you can see it starts to level off there. Okay, so um, I think that kind of wraps up kind of quickly what I want to show here. Now, again, as you can see in the interface, there's so many different results. And, and for, for the webinar today, you know, I, I wanted to just try to pick a couple things to give you an idea of, of, a, of the, the breadth of capabilities in the software here. And, uh, of course, if there's anything specific you'd like to see, you know, we can always, after the webinar, uh, take a look at one of your projects and one of your designs and so forth. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and exit out here. Minimize this. Okay, so now what I want to do is look at so this example. So I think you've seen this one. This is the one we uh, we showed in the PowerPoint, uh, the intro, and then just recently I showed you a, a slide. So what I want to do here is what I've done is I have two examples. So we have all right. So on the on the right side here we have uh, basically our movable half. So what we have here is we just have our, our B plate turned on, our core block, and a core pin you know, through our four cavity tool. So I have in here that everything is assigned as P20. So, and it says movable half here, but really what we're looking at is, is this is P20, this is, but over here what I've done is I've actually assigned these core blocks and pins as mold max. You know, so more of a, a much higher conductive mold material. So. What I want to do is to show the difference here, all right, of running this. So this is the same exact project, uh, same process, you know, same fill time, same material polymer and everything. But all I did was change uh, the, the type of core. And I, don't, I really just want to look at you know, how it affects the, the heat transfer uh, in and out of the cavity. And then, of course, you can go and look at the part itself and how it affects different things with the part, you know, the quality of the part, and, and cycle time and so forth. Okay, here. So what I want to do is I'm going to turn on my uh, temperature. So here, let's say, let's just go to, say, pick, uh, I guess we can pick any cycle here. Let's just say pick cycle five. Actually, I'm just going to keep it consistent. Let's just pick a time step here. I'll go to this one, five seconds into packing. Okay, so now to keep it consistent, I'm going to go ahead and scale this to be consistent between the two views. So what I'll do is go ahead and scale this just from 180 to 252. I've run this beforehand, so I know that that's what's going to be on this side. So now if I go over to this one, I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to go to my scale. I'm going to set 180, 252. I'm going to go to my results, and then cooling. And we were looking at, I think it was cycle five, and then we went down to our first five-second time step. Okay, so so right now we're looking at really the same exact uh, point, so the fifth cycle at five seconds into packing. And on the right side we have the beryllium copper. I'm sorry, on the, on the left side we have the beryllium copper. And then on the right side, we have uh, the difference. So now if we actually query on this, take a, take a value here. The same thing over here. So you can see we have quite a, quite a large difference there. In the uh, in the temperature of that core. Let me go back here to a different uh, different time step. Now we'll do the same thing over here. Let's go to cycle one now. So we have it five five. So again, you can see uh, quite a, quite a drastic difference there. Uh, between the two. I guess to be consistent here, I should pick on, let's 
something like that. And of course, you you still have the same uh, the, the same abilities, right? So we can go through, and now you know if we want to take a deeper look, you know, we can go ahead and slice through this. And you can see here that as I slice through the part, and you can see I got my cooling lines, and so forth. Actually, let's go ahead and slice in the uh, in the y direction. So you can see there we have our, our cooling line design right through the tool, and uh, and again it's uh you know it's, it's very very powerful to be able to look at your actual mold base right and this is more in the terms of what what you're used to right you know this is this is the world you're living in is you're not just looking at a at a part and trying to imagine what's around it right now we're actually looking at simulation looking at the physical tool and the nice thing is you can go in steps you know you know there, there's obviously a process so you start out with a with a part so you can run some quick analysis early on and then once you actually start building that mold, concurrently you can actually be running Sigma soft analysis as you're building those different components and you're trying to make decisions. You know, what type of mold steel do we use? You know, where do we need cooling and where should the cooling go? And you can quickly run that, right? You know, so once the designer has the, the, some of the basic mold plates, they can send it to you or uh, that person themselves can run the analysis and then say, okay, yeah, if I put cooling through here, I can see that I get my best uh, heat transfer in and out of the tool. And then again, then go in and look at some of the related results and look at the part quality and so forth. I'll go ahead and uh, animate this back up. You can see the, you know, the temperature gradient through the mold. And we can do the same thing over here. I go ahead and slice it in the Z direction. Oops, I think I'm in a, a different the Y direction. You can see here again. You know, on, on this side we have uh, you know, quite a different uh, heat load uh, versus over on this side. Okay, so um, I think at this point, uh, I think we have uh, we have a lot of people on the line, so I want to uh, leave enough time for some questions.